Remember this, Olivier Vernon's infamous low hit on Marcus Mariota earlier this season? Well, USA Today's Tom Palacero writes how that moment could have been the beginning of the end of Ken Wisenhunt in Tennessee. Mariota played most of that game before being pulled late in the fourth quarter. He hasn't played since. Titans interim president slash CEO Steve Underwood was asked Tuesday if controlling owner Amy Adams Strunk was concerned about leaving in Mariota against Miami. Here's what Underwood had to say, quote, I didn't hear that exact concern, but Strunk has repeatedly mentioned Marcus's health to me. I think she exactly, I think she actually spoke to Mike Malarkey, the Titans interim coach, about it this morning. I know she had talked to Ken about it and to Rustin Webster, the general manager. She's very concerned about making sure that we do everything that's necessary, including keeping him out of games in order to avoid making his current injuries any worse. Skip. Should Wisenhunt's handling of Mariota played a role in his firing? No. Stephen A., if, if it did, and I cannot defend Ken Wisenhunt in the big picture, but if this was the reason that he was fired, it's just flat out wrong. Now, if you want to look at his record as Titans head coach, which is 3-20, and 20, you got me there. If you want to look at his record over his past 35 games as an NFL head coach dating back to his, his last year at Arizona, during which he's 4-31, and 31, you really got me there. But I still have some respect for Ken Wisenhunt. If you recall, he did coach Arizona to that 08 Super Bowl. And the next year, he did coach that Arizona team to a 10-6 and six record. I, I still have enough respect for him in his handling of a quarterback's despite the tweet from Matt Leinart ripping him yesterday, I, I don't understand what he did wrong with Marcus Mariota. Now, I'm old school, and I'm probably, I view this differently than you do, if I can recollect our debate about how RG3 was handled or mishandled by Mike Shanahan during that playoff game in Washington, in which RG3 was hurt. Marcus Mariota, I thought, was protected well enough. Remember that opener against Jameis at Tampa? It was dinks and dunks. It was a lot of three-step drops, bang, bang, lots of yards after catch. He was 13 of 15 for 209 and four touchdowns, which were mostly yards after catch touchdowns. And he has been sacked some, but, but not a, a dangerous amount of sacks. And after he took the shot from Olivier, you know, he goes in the locker room at halftime. He puts a brace on. He went back out. I, I get that. He finished with four turnovers in that game. But that was a leadership moment for him. That was a moment during which Marcus can win the locker room because he says, I'm going to tough it up. I'm going to suck it up. I'm going to go back out there, and I'm going to give you all I got because he did not have, as you know, ruptured ligaments. He had a sprained knee. Now, that can be fairly serious, but not serious enough that you can't tough out the rest of that football game and help win over your team. The team isn't very good. We talk all the time about lack of sporting, supporting cast. He's got very little. As you know, I'm not the biggest Marcus Mariota fan going into the draft last year, much bigger Jameis fan, but you can't baby him. You, you can't overprotect him. Now Mike Malarkey, the new interim head coach, is under orders to protect him. And I don't know Amy Adams Strunk, obviously the daughter of the, the late Bud Adams, longtime owner of this franchise, and I don't know how close she is to Marcus, but maybe did she let her heart get in the way here that, that he just took too much of a beating? I don't know. He obviously is their meal ticket. He is their franchise quarterback. But I think you have to let the franchise quarterback in the very violent game of pro football prove to the locker room that you can take some punishment. And I think he did. And I think he's still standing, and I think he's going to be able to come back here pretty quickly, and we'll see how he does the rest of the year. But I don't know how much more you can protect him with protections or, or play calls or whatever. I thought they did a pretty good job of that to start with. Well, I'm not sure about that, Skip Bayless, and you're right. You are old school. I'm a tad bit different than you, although I pride myself in being old school unabashedly so. Let's be clear about something here. Ken Wisenhunt may not have deserved to be the head coach to begin with. 
there were other candidates that you could have had out there. His last three seasons in, in Arizona, uh, they were mediocre seasons. I think it was a 1-7-9 and nine season or 8-8 eight and eight se season sandwiched by two 5-11 and 11 seasons. And the only time that he had a really, really good year, actually two years, they went 9-7 and seven the year they went to the Super Bowl. Kurt Warner was your quarterback. The year after that, they went back to the playoffs with a 10-6 and six record, and you had guys like John Skelton and Derek Anderson and Max Hall as your quarterback. The year after that, even, you had a Kevin Cobb with a Skelton. So you haven't had much to work with. What we know about Wisenhunt is that experienced, talented quarterbacks are individuals he can help, a la Philip Rivers. But outside of that, he struggles. He struggles to be a leader. He struggles to be a head coach. He's really one of those typical guys that are more uh, are suitable for a coordinator's position as opposed to a head coaching position. So when we take that into consideration, and then we look at the 2-14 and 14 season last year, and we recognize that this is the Tennessee Titans that we're talking about here. They won, had a 13-3 and three season in 2008 before losing a divisional playoff game. Ever since that time, they had one 9-7 and seven season, one 8-8 eight and eight season, and they didn't win more than seven games other than those two seasons since 2009. So they've been mediocre to be kind you get the number two overall pick in the draft marcus mariota you're watching him along those first few games skip taking some hits getting a little bit beat up we we were proud of his toughness if you remember correctly because we saw him standing up in there and taking some big time shots getting introduced to that nfl game but this was a nasty hit that Ken Wisenhunt himself acknowledged in a post-game press conference he deemed dirty. Well, if you deemed it dirty and it infuriated you to the point where your quarterback was hurt, considering the fact that he's the number two overall pick and you have an investment to protect, I'm, I'm thinking that Amy Adams Strunk was on the right course here when she's talking about leaning towards the side of caution because it clearly is a marathon it's not a sprint we don't need instant results right now what we need is somebody to build this franchise around and let's not jeopardize him in his rookie campaign because we leave him in a particular game a little bit too long why bother with that I think that makes perfect sense, especially when you're the owner because you're thinking about the business investment. This is not some dude that's just having an effective game or is playing well for you. This is your franchise quarterback. This is the future you have staked your franchise on. He's not just somebody you need to play. He's somebody you need to market. And Ken Wisenhunt seemingly being oblivious to that, I think errs on the side of, 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 of irresponsible. To me, I'm not saying you deserve to be fired because of that, the 3-20 and 20 record in a year and a half, the 4-31 and 31 record over your last 35 games, the willingness that you, or the display that you put on that shows that maybe, just maybe, being a head coach ain't your thing. All of that plays a role in it, not just that one incident with Marcus Mariota. But if you're talking about a final straw, that's applicable. It was a final straw as far as I'm concerned. I had no problem if that is the ultimate final straw, the nail in the coffin. It can't be the only reason, but if that's the nail in the coffin, I have no problem with it whatsoever. Makes sense to me. Hmm. So you're saying if the team doctor cleared Mariota at halftime to go back out with a brace on just to protect what could be a sprained knee, you would baby him to the point you'd say, no, I'm going to save you from yourself. We need to protect I'm, our young rookie I'm franchise saying, quarterback. I'm saying that I'm saying that for this team, yes. For this team in this situation, with the investment that they've made, with the struggles that they've had in desperately trying to find a quarterback, I'm saying you could have sat him out the rest of the game and then... And, and, and at, after the game is over, you evaluate him accordingly. You evaluate him that week, and then whatever decision is made, the, the decision is made. But in the throes of that moment, you do not do that in that situation because you understand if you're Ken Wisenhunt, all that went into acquiring Marcus Mariota. You understand, Skip, that it's not just about winning or losing a particular week. It's about the business side of it and the bigger picture. He had a very micro perspective, not a macro perspective, and that's what ultimately, I believe, should have cost him his job.
Okay, but if you told me that Marcus Mariota had already proven at that point he was going to make the Pro Bowl, that he was so good that he could help save Wisenhunt's season and job potentially, then I'd say, oh, maybe Wisenhunt pushed him to play in the second half because he needed him to play selfishly. That's not going on here. The kid hasn't been that good since game one against Jameis, again, when he's dinking and dunking for four touchdowns. I'm sorry. I, I don't think he needed Marcus to go play for his sake. I think he wanted Marcus to play for Marcus's sake, to go show you that th it's, it's a man's game. It's not a college kid's game anymore. you got to tough it up and have a high pain threshold. If the team doctor says you're going to be okay, go play. And that's what happened. Well, first of all, I, I think the thing that you're confusing here, Skip, is that in no way am I saying that he, he you know, he, he just threw Marcus Mariota to the wolves or whatever. I'm saying to you, he had a responsibility to take the bigger picture into consideration, not just for himself as a coach, along with the players that he's coaching, but for the organization overall, because you know what you walked into when you took the job. You were lucky to get the head coaching job. When he got, when he landed the Tennessee job, all of us were sitting here saying, why him? What was so special about him? Did you have other coaches you could go out there and get? Did you see his last couple of years in Arizona? Did you see the way he struggled with quarterbacks? When we talked about Marcus Mariota being drafted by Tennessee, one of the things we lamented was the possibility that he was going to land with Wisenhunt because Wisenhunt's reputation wasn't that great with young quarterbacks. So all of these things were things that we were bringing up as points of discussion to engage in dialogue about prior to Marcus Mariota arriving there. Then he arrives there and you decide that this is what you want to this is what you want to do when you've got an owner that's sitting there and they're using him in Nashville, Tennessee mm. as their lone marketing commodity. And you just throw him out there, put a knee brace on. He can walk, he can backpedal, he can throw it in the pocket. Don't worry about it. I understand if you're Jay Cutler and you got an NFC Championship game on the line, but this early in this guy's career, this early in the season, you couldn't just wait and sit him out the rest of the game when you got Zach Mettenberger there and come back to him the next week? I would have been annoyed too if I was Amy Adams Strunk. I would have mm. been annoyed with him. You know what? There's just a little bit of Pep Hamilton syndrome going on here in that I feel like they needed a scapegoat. They needed a fall guy because their young quarterback, I know it's different with Andrew Luck in his fourth year, that's why I said just a little bit, but I think they thought he was going to save their world, and he's just not. I, I don't think he's that good, and you just look at his QBR. That, but he had a 97 QBR at Jameis in that opener, and then he came down to 30, then 39. He had 156 against yeah, the Bills, which is okay, and then he had an 8 against the Dolphins. Well, I, he's well, again, he's a rookie, but... I think somebody had to pay because the rookie hasn't been the godsend early on they thought he was going to be. I, I respectfully disagree with you there. And the reason why I say that, Skip, is because they didn't fire some underling, some offensive coordinator, and protect boys hovering above him. Mm -hmm. They fired the head coach. They sure did. What they said is, we're thinking about the vision moving forward, and you ain't the guy we want. That's what they're saying. You got Indianapolis by getting rid of Chuck Pagano. If Grigson and, 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 and Pagano are still there, Pagano rather, mm -hmm. if, if P Chuck Pagano and Grigson are still there, what difference does it make? You can sit there and point the figure at Pep Hamilton all you want, but it doesn't make a bit of difference if you got those other two in place. In this case, you change at the top, which means that everybody under him is not safe. So you sent the message, we're going, this is what we're trying to do. We're not satisfied with the leadership that we have here. And the buck is supposed to stop with you, so you're going. They ain't blaming on a physical coordinator. They ain't fired a team doctor who evaluated Marcus Mariota. They got rid of the head coach, and that's who should have been going. I have no problem with it. None. None okay. whatsoever. Do, do you still see a bright future for Marcus Mariota? I think there's potential there. I like the way he looked against Buffalo, even though he threw, I'm sorry, against Indy, even though he threw two interceptions. Uh, um, I'm just looking at some of his numbers right here. He completed 81% of his passes in week one, 60, it was 60 and above percent, 61, 65, and 63% of his passes the last three weeks that he had played. Um, he had had five interceptions on the season, but he's been respectable. I think he has potential because he has wheels and he has an IQ. 
So it's just a matter of how much punishment he can take. Do I think he's going to be Jam better than Jameis Winston? Hell no. But I do believe he can end up being a good quarterback on the NFL level. I do not see a bust here. I think he's got potential. Right or wrong, we know what the NFL stands for, not for long. And when a team's one in six, last in the AFC South, you know that somebody's going to be out. And we are not certain yet if Mariota will play this Sunday. They'll be looking for their second win of the season in New Orleans.